Hello grade 6 students and welcome back to geography. Today our lesson is about the natural resources. You know that certain vital resources such as the water, the soils and the minerals may determine whether people choose to live in a place or how wealthy people are. So we're going to learn about these resources and you can find this lesson on pages 68 to 72. Don't forget that you have to read this section to scan it so you can have a full idea about the main things that we will explain it during this recording. So our objectives for today, by the end of this session, you should be able to differentiate between renewable and non-renewable resources. We have to define what do you mean by the mineral resources, such as the metals, the rock, and the soil, and we will indicate the availability and the uses of different energy resources. At the end, we're going to explain how the scarcity of the resources affect the life in a given region. The main key terms that you should write down on your ESS copybooks are natural resource, renewable resource, non-renewable resource, deforestation, fossil fuel, and hydroelectric power. Take two minutes to check your prior knowledge and to know how can you uh, evaluate your knowledge about the natural resources. So in the previous sessions, we learned about the ways uh, we use the sun, the water, the land, and how these resources are used. Now, we're going to look around the human-made products and the different resources that the human beings used in order to make new products that are very useful. For example, we use the petroleum or the oil to make plastics for cell phones. We use the metals to make machines, uh, which we then use to make many other items too. Without these materials, as you know, our lives will change drastically. So let's start first by what is a natural resource. So to answer this question, I just want to explain for you what we mean by a resource as a word. A resource is a something that is useful to the people. Let's take a look at this video. You've probably noticed by now, in your years of being a human, that human beings need a lot of stuff to live. Food, water, shelter, YouTube, well, maybe not that last one. So where does all of this stuff come from? Why, it comes from our very own Earth. We live on a planet that has all of the stuff we need to survive. There's fresh water to drink, fruit on trees, and wood to build our houses. Convenient, right? We call this stuff resources. Because humans need so many of these resources to live, it's easier for us to form communities, like cities or neighborhoods, where these resources are plentiful, so we don't have to travel long distances to find them on our own. That's why you don't normally see big cities in the middle of deserts, where there's no water, or at the top of freezing mountains, where there's no food. Think about your own town and where it's located. If it's close to things like water and agriculture, that was probably no accident. Humans and other animals tend to thrive in places that are near the resources they need to survive. Of course, the stuff we need to live doesn't come ready to use right out of the earth. Although I would personally love it if there were, say, a lake full of pure hot fudge. But in order for us to use the resources around us, we have to transform them first. Because I'm kind of hungry right now, let's use food as an example. In fact, let's make a cake. Think about all the ingredients that you need to put together in order to bake one of these delicious treats. Let's start with some water. The water that comes out of your kitchen faucet most likely came from rivers and lakes around your town. But before the water is safe to drink, it has to be cleaned and stored in places like reservoirs and water towers. Okay, what next? 
flour, eggs, sugar, and milk. These ingredients, and a lot of the other foods that we eat, have to be cultivated, which means grown on farms, before they can be shipped to grocery stores. In order to do this, farms have to be where crops and livestock can live and grow. All right, now we need to mix these ingredients all together. That means that our electric mixer needs power. The energy we use to power all of our gizmos can come from a lot of different places. Sometimes it comes from materials that we have to dig underground to find, like oil and natural gas. Some houses get their energy from the sun or by wind. Some towns that are close to large dams can even get their energy from moving water. But more on that later. Now, how do we bake this bad boy? The same kinds of energy that powered our mixer also help do things like heat our homes and cook our food. So from start to finish, everything we use to make our cake came from the transformation of the resources around us. The effect the natural world has on our lives is immense. And something as simple as baking a cake shows that we wouldn't be able to live the way we do without the abundance of natural resources on our planet. And it doesn't hurt that the end result of those resources can be a cake. The Earth, as we know, provides us with valuable resources that we can use. We call them natural resources. So a natural resource is any material in nature that people use and value. Earth's most important natural resources include the air, the water, the soil, the forests, and the minerals. Understanding how and why people use natural resources is an important part of geography. We use some of the natural resources just as they are, such as the wind, and sometimes we can do certain changes for such some kinds of natural resources so they will be useful. For example, we do certain changes for the metals to make them or to, to be used in producing other kinds of items like the bicycles or the watches or whatever. Basically, we have two types of natural resources. We have the renewable resources and the non-renewable resources. The difference between them is that the renewable resources, they are replaced naturally by the earth, while the non-renewable resources, they can't be replaced. They will run out one day. So let's list some of the examples about the natural resources, the renewable ones, the sun, the wind, the water, the soil, and the plants. If you want to think about it in a different way, like listing the advantages and the disadvantages of the renewable resources, the main advantages are uh, that the, these resources are sustainable, they require little maintenance, and produce little waste. Now, the disadvantages, however, uh, they are not that much, but there are certain disadvantages. For example, uh, the, these resources are difficult to produce in larger quantities, and the reliability of the supply is often depending on the weather. So if you want to use the wind resource as a resource, you have to wait for the weather to provide you with the given wind speed, for example. Or if you want to use the sun as a main source of energy, you have to wait to have, for example, a sunny weather. So, in general, the renewable resources are better for the environment. And these resources, can last forever if they were used wisely. So how to use these renewable resources? For example, we can use the hydroelectric power, which is the production of the electricity from the water power. So we obtain energy from moving water by damming the rivers. The dams, they can actually generate electricity by changing the flow energy of water into electric energy. Another renewable energy source is the wind. People have long used the wind to power the windmills. Today, we use the wind to power the wind turbines. At, what do we mean by the wind turbines? It's a type of modern windmills. And usually, uh, the wind turbines, they are used to create electric energy. For this reason, you may notice that in many given countries, they created what you call the wind farms. So at the wind farms, hundreds of turbines create electricity in windy places. 
A third source of renewable energy is the heat from the sun and the earth. Now, we can use the solar power or the power from the sun to heat the water or the homes, especially by using the solar panels, as you know, we can use the solar energy and change it into electric energy. Now, another important source of energy is what we call the geothermal energy. Geothermal energy is the heat that is coming out of the earth. So, geothermal energy mainly powers different plants where they can use the steam and the hot water located within the earth to create electricity also. So, in certain places, like in Iceland, for example, it will look like as if um, water vapor spring, as if a spring, but it's emitting water vapor. So, uh, this is actually because of the hot water and this hot water is due to the uh, geothermal energy effect. So as you see here, this is the solar panel, this is the windmill, this is actually the dam where uh, the water, uh, the energy of the water, the flowing energy of the water will change into electric energy, and this is the geothermal energy. It, uh, it will appear as if it's um, steam vapor, vapor steam uh, coming out of the earth's surface. Now, on the other hand, we have what we call the non-renewable resources. So, examples about the non-renewable resources are the coal, the oil, the diamonds, the fossil fuels, for example. You know that uh, we have a lot of advantages and disadvantages for the non-renewable resources. For example, um, the advantages of the non-renewable resources is that it supplies us with good um, uh, energy or it supplies us with enough sufficient amount of energy and the cost can be still cheap ones and it can be produced actually in a given places where it is upon abundant there and it will produce as i told you a large amount of energy now what about the disadvantages they are non sustainable and they are not good and totally for the environment, they harm our environment, and one day they will run out. The use of them can produce pollutants, and this is very risky uh, for the human life, for the plant life, for the marine life, for um, all the living things, actually. Most of the energy uh, of the non-renewable resources comes from the fossil fuels. Now, uh, what do you mean by the fossil fuels? They are actually non-renewable resources and they are formed from the remains of the ancient plants and animals. For example, the coal, the petroleum, the natural gases, they are all the remains of ancient plant animals. Um, these remains, they are very old and they have changed into these resources over the years. Um, just an important point to mention about the natural gas, that the cleanest burning fossil fuel is the natural gas. This is um, for you to know it, while the other ones, they may cause uh, serious pollution. So as you see here, uh, this is um, the petroleum refinery, and here as you see, we have the coal. A final energy resource is the nuclear energy. We obtain this energy by splitting the atoms. What do you mean by the atoms? All the matter, they are made up of very tiny particles. We call them atoms. When we split this atom, when we try to break this atom, it will produce the nuclear energy. Now, this process or for, to produce the nuclear energy, we're going to use a metal which we call it uranium. For this reason, some people, they do consider the nuclear energy as non-renewable one because it depends mainly on uranium. In fact, the nuclear energy does not pollute the air, but it does produce dangerous wastes. These wastes must be stored for thousands of years before they are safe. In addition, an accident at a nuclear power plant can have a terrible devastating effects. So it's um, dangerous, but it can produce a huge amount of energy too. Let's look at this video. There are lots of different ways to produce energy. Nuclear power is one of these choices. It is low carbon and reliable. 
Here's how it works. There's this thing called an atom. Atoms are the basic building blocks of everyday objects. A desk, the air and even you are made up of atoms. Nuclear energy is the energy stored in the nucleus or centre of an atom. To release this energy, power plants split the middle of these atoms into even smaller parts. When they do this, energy is released as heat. This heat is used to boil water to make steam, like a giant kettle. The steam spins a huge turbine that works a generator. The generator makes electricity. Afterwards, the steam cools down and turns back into water so it can be used again. After the energy is created at a nuclear plant, like this one being built by Horizon Nuclear Power in North Wales, it moves through wires to homes and plugs to the things we use every day. By using nuclear energy as part of our energy mix, we can help create a brighter future for us all to live in. Now finally, what are the mineral resources? Like energy resources, mineral resources can be quite valuable. These resources include the metals, the salt, the rocks and the gemstones. Minerals fulfill countless needs. Look around you to find a few. Your school is built up likely, including the steel, the iron, uh, the aluminum, so the outer walls um, at your home, for example, they may, be, they may be made up of the limestone, so the window glass is made up from the quartz uh, that is a mineral in the sand. So, everything around us uh, including or is including uh, something related to the mineral resources. Now, the mineral resources, they are non-renewable, so we need to conserve them. So recycling uh, of these items, such as the aluminum or the steel or the iron, will make the supply of these valuable resources last longer. So as we are done with the first part of the section, um, as an activity, I'm going to divide you into two teams and each team will create a five quiz questions uh, based on today's lesson. So, uh, we will switch uh, the questions and each team will answer the other team's questions and the team with the most points uh, will win. I will be waiting there for you on Zoom to discuss more about this topic and to ask me uh, about your inquiries.